So today's video is going to be, it's going to be a video that I'm going to enjoy very much. I hope you guys do as well. In previous videos, you've probably seen police cars in the background. A lot of you have asked questions about them. Some of you already know that we rent vehicles to the studios. Being a former police officer, I have a thing for cop cars. We figured why not take an opportunity to, to share them with you. So let's do this. All right, it, it is so cool seeing all these things, all these things lined up together. Not even sure where to start, but I'm just gonna just roll with this. So, you know, as you could see, there is just a whole fleet of different makes and models. And you'll see the latest model Ford, Ex Ford Interceptor. I always wanna say Explorer, but you technically aren't allowed to call them Explorers. It's not an Explorer, it's a police interceptor utility! When Ford gave up the Crown Victoria, they started producing the Explorer in an interceptor version, and it's a for police only type of vehicle. This is the latest model Explorer, oh. um, which is 2020 and newer, uh, started making all of their drivetrains longitudinal, all wheel drive, and different platform, longer wheelbase, really a far superior uh, interceptor to the previous generation Explorer interceptor that you saw in the late teens, 2016, 17. But the 2020 newer is really a phenomenal platform. And so we're starting to acquire these because a lot of the studios are requesting these for the TV shows. This is the primary vehicle being used by law enforcement now. Probably end up uh, looking for a few more Explorers just to have in our, our portfolio of available rental cars for the studios. And you know, this just so happens to be the, the hybrid version of the uh, police interceptor. It's interesting because you know, uh, the non-hybrids, the gas powered ones, they always have these extremely long idle hours. And the reason for that is, is because, you know, so often officers just pull over to the side of the road with the car running and they write their reports or they're dealing with someone. You smell something rabbit? Fear. And the car just stays at idle running. Um, what's nice about the hybrids is they have much lower uh, idle hours because the hybrid system kicks in and yeah, it'll recycle itself, turn itself on and off just to charge the battery. Kind of torque monsters, quite a bit of torque, like 335 horsepower with the hybrid. You can feel it, it's a little torque monster, it pulls like a freight train. So um, probably look for a few more of those. Uh, I've actually ordered, a lot of the East Coast agencies um, just have one spotlight. And the reasoning behind that was back in the old days, in the 60s, you'll notice that a lot of the California law enforcement vehicles have dual spotlights. And that's because two-man units. In the old days, there was a lot of two-man units running around. So you had a driver and a passenger. Each person had its own spotlight. A lot of the East Coast cars operate under a one-man unit. And so they just have single spotlights. So um, I've actually ordered, and I have a new spotlight that'll go on the passenger side, just so it can kind of tie into what you normally see out here in California, since so many of the shows supposedly take place in Los Angeles, and uh, most uh, most LAPD cars are dual spotlights, just like California Highway Patrol. So be looking for another Explorer soon. The Chargers, also very popular, have been used for many, many years. Uh, this is a 2011 to 2014 version Charger. The previous generation of this, it proved to be a really popular vehicle. They came in V6s and the Hemi 5.7 V8. It was half and half. Half the agencies uh, went with the Hemis and the other half of the agencies went with the V6. And the V6, although, you know, sounding like not very, very fast, but in a police package V6, uh, still get up to 130 miles per hour. Uh, and make over 305 horsepower. So very comparable horsepower to the 4.6 liter Crown Vic V8 that was used for so many years. I mean, for over a decade, they used that Crown Vic. So this particular generation is 2011 to 2014. And it just so happens that these, these five chargers all came from the same agency. And what's so great about them all coming from the same agency is they're all keyed the same. One key works all cars, which is great when you have multiple cars on the set and you, know, you don't have to worry about having the right key 
for the right car. So this, this one actually came back from the set rental. I'm not sure what TV show it was. On, a lot of times we don't even ask. Uh, they just go away for a month and we get them back and, and they just leave the graphics on them. And then when they go back into rental fleet, this particular car was used as an LAPD car. So you'll see LAPD graphics on it. Uh, these are all official police cars. Um, like I said, they're just expired units that uh, certain agencies retire their cars at 80,000 miles. Some agencies retire their cars at 150,000 miles. These all have just slightly over 100,000 miles on them. This version is the 2015 and newer. So 2015 to 2023. And I believe they're, I think they were still spitting out these cars in early 2024, but they're all 2023 models. And, and they, they look all the same. So these are getting a lot of rental right now. And that's why we have so many of them. You'll see this one at the end, we took the spotlights off of this one. We painted it gray to, to show it as a detective car. It still has the, the dog dish caps on it. It was formerly black and white, but we did a complete color change on it, did all the door jams. We actually plated this one and we use it as a spare car when we have errands to run and whatnot. You'll see some unique cars over here. I don't know if you noticed the 69 Polara. 69 Polaras are really hard to come by. And, and this is dressed up to look like a CHP car. This is a civilian car. This was not a formal police car. Decided to turn this into a police car because you just can't find 69 Polaras in post configuration, four door post cars. You'll see the four door hardtop without a center post. Um, but you know, all the police cars that were made in 69 were equipped as four door post cars. And the thing is, what's really interesting in 1969, California Highway Patrol ordered tons of these things. In 1969, the 440 equipped CHP package police car, you'll always be able to tell because of the ivory white steering wheel. This doesn't have an ivory white steering wheel, but they would go 135 miles an hour, those cars. I mean, just, and they held the record for the fastest top speed police car all the way up until like 1995 when Chevrolet came out with their, their Impala Caprice with the LT1 and they beat it by five miles an hour. And, uh, but it, it retained its <laughs> power rating and, and top speed for a very long time. This is my SSP Mustang. This is a true California Highway Patrol car. It's a 1988. I think I've done a video on this in the past. If you look back in our, our videos, you'll find a, a build series on this. I've done a few of these over the years. One lives in the Peterson Auto Museum, uh, but this is a true 1988 California Highway Patrol package, SSP Mustang. It came equipped from Ford by CHP with the spotlights, whip tail antenna on the rear quarter. Uh, I've acquired all the correct radios, all the correct deck lights. It's pretty much ready to just be assembled. And I'm just kind of scatterbrained with so many builds going on here. We haven't had an opportunity to really start putting it back together, but I have all the correct decals. That's actually got a Kenny Bell supercharger in it. It's got a really quite modified suspension for some track driving. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with that car. I regretted selling my 89 SSP CHP. I had a lot of fun with that car. And when I let that car go, this one just happened to pop up on the market. And I thought, okay, I'm just gonna buy it and handed it off to Jason. You've heard me talk about Jason in previous videos. He's uh, a Fox body guru. The guy just knows everything about Fox body cars. So he, uh, he did a full rotisserie restoration on this car for me. He's, he'd done several Mustangs for me. I was really excited to get it back and he just killed it. I mean, the car is better than it came out of the factory. This Diplomat is a 1981. This is also a true California Highway Patrol vehicle. It served in San Luis Obispo. It has all the correct lighting in it, has the correct radios in it. This was a car that went on a Netflix uh, set and it went on on set for about three, four months. And it left our, <laughs> it left our property as a California Highway Patrol black and white and it came back blue and white with all the graphics removed. They weren't supposed to do that. Um, usually they'll vinyl wrap a car to, to make it look the way they want it to look. Um, but in this particular case, we were floored when it came back and they painted it blue. So we've had to restore this car. They did pay us to repaint the car back to its original black and white colors, which uh, we've done years ago. I just haven't put the new graphics back on it, but uh, it will eventually have its new graphics on it. And then over here, you'll see a couple 72 Polaris. This is the Polaris that that took over from 69. Now there was a, a mid-year 1970. I don't have a 70, um, but uh, these are 71 72s. These are both 1972s. These are not police package cars, but since I was able to find two four-door post cars, which all law enforcement cars were, 
I decided to turn them into police cars because we are starting to get a lot of requests. We hear that there are lots of TV shows and movies um, that are dated back to the early 70s. This is a robbery. Not in my town, dirtbag. And it just made sense for me to have a few of those cars in our collection so that in the event the studio called us and said, hey, do you have a couple matching cars? These two cars will match. I've acquired spotlights. I've already made push bars. Pretty much what I did was I copied whatever they did from the California Highway Patrol. Uh, the California Highway Patrol is a really interesting law enforcement agency. So all the push bars that you see and all the cages and all the, the metal work that adapts the radio equipment to hold up the equipment in the cars is made by the California prison system. They have California prisoners making the push bars for the entire fleet of the California Highway Patrol cars. So I was able to acquire uh, some original 1972 uh, prison made push bars. Uh, as you can see, this diplomat has push bars that were made by the California prison system. That is a correct push bar for that car. So we were able to actually uh, make the copies of those push bars for these two Polaris. These two Polaris will both have spotlights on them. These currently have vinyl tops, but we're gonna remove the vinyl tops. They're gonna probably get painted all white for now, possibly black and white. It'll have the spotlights, the push bars, and when the request comes in, you know, we could put period correct uh, beacon lights on it or keep it a flat top like most state troopers have flat tops. No shit. No shit, Jeff. No shit. But we do have a collection of light bars and things like that from different eras. We'll just, we'll wait for the request to come in. But being that we have both cars, just makes sense to hold on to them. And you know, when I see stuff like this come up on Facebook Marketplace or on OfferUp or Craigslist. Hi, is that still available? Oh uh, yeah, actually they are, you can just, I just gotta stay away from the rust stuff. There's a lot of rusty cars on the East Coast. Nothing sues a rusty bumper like Rusties. Wow, look at that shine. They're just a pain in the ass to work with, you know? So if I can find them solid, I'll acquire them. As long as they run and drive, we keep them maintained and they just stay at our storage facility. Yeah, man, I, uh, I love this space. The studio rental stuff, like I said, it's really hit or miss. Uh, as you guys may or may not know that there was a writer strike and an actor strike kind of back to back, and there were a lot of guys that were just really struggling. And uh, hell, we had a whole slew of cornets and monocos that were going out on rental. In fact, I'll push up a couple of videos of all those cars coming back from the, the Joker set and a couple of our ambulances also went on rental for those uh, for those scenes. It just kind of went dead and these were cars that I wasn't necessarily you know going to keep so I decided to sell all four of them and they all, all four of those cars sold relatively quick. I kind of wish I had them today but again it's space. This is California. Everything is so freaking expensive here and the real estate and, and just to store a car in a, in a safe environment is extremely costly. You know, people love buying cars from California because we don't have the rust issues that so many East Coast and, you know, the Rust Belt cars have, but it's an expensive place to store cars. These normally aren't here. These normally are at our storage facility. By the way, the thing I didn't mention is the studio will install overhead lights depending on what agency it is. Each agency has its own different light bar. And so the studio has uh, prop people that that's all they do. They investigate, okay, if this is a car that's gonna be a Los Angeles Police Department car, we know that in this year they use this type of light bar, then they'll go acquire those light bars and they'll install the light bars on the cars. They'll, like I said, they'll put their own vinyl graphics on it to make it look like the car they want it to, what it's supposed to represent in the TV show or the movie. Yeah, that's a wild goose chase over here at Nakatomi Plaza. It all depends. If it's just a car that's sitting in the background with its lights on conducting, say, a traffic stop, you don't need to have radios in it. You just need to have the antennas and all the necessary equipment that looks like it would be an operable police car. Um, but if it's, a, if it's a shot that is an interior shot and you see the officer picking up the mic and talking to the dispatcher uh, over the radio, then yeah, we'll go as far as installing the radio equipment. Like the Diplomat is a good example of that. It is a authentic California Highway Patrol police car from 1981. It has the correct radio, it has the correct unitrol system that operates the lights, and it has the mic, it has the PA mic, it has the map light, it has the shotgun rack. And so if, uh, if, 
if it's a scene where that stuff is being used, we do have some of that equipment for the chargers. Uh, we'll install it if we know that it's going to be used in a scene. Then we'll install the radio equipment, a monitor, you know, a mic, uh, and so on. So, you know, it really all depends. For the most part, we don't install radios in the cars that we provide because most of the cars are just backdrop cars or scene being rolling into scene or rolling out of scene. If it's a a Hero One car, say for instance, it's a TV show and the camera's on the officer all the time, then they're likely going to have a Buck car, which is basically a trailer queen car that sits on a trailer and has all the operable radio equipment and stuff. But if it's a scene where they're pulling up, the camera's pulling right into the actor uh, behind the wheel and you have to see him operate the radio equipment, then we'll install the radios. But again, the different studios have their own prop managers that actually investigate all this stuff and they'll find the correct radio equipment to install in the cars. And sometimes they leave the equipment in the cars and, and we just leave it in the car to be used uh, for the next studio that wants to rent it. So. A lot of people have asked, well, what kind of money do you make in the rental car studio business? Ah, it's not a liquid! We're not the only people in town. I mean, there's a lot of companies, especially in, in Southern California, that specialize in studio rental stuff. And, uh, you know, an average charger will rent for $450 to $500 a day, as low as $375 a day, depending on the car. Again, if it's a classic car, the price goes up. You know, classic cars usually double or 700, 800 a day. And then we do uh, extended rentals. So we do monthly rentals and it all depends. I mean, it could be as little as $3,500 a month, as much as $8,500 a month. So, you know, that's something that's always discussed and it's something that we, we negotiate uh, through the process with the studio. This space is a unique. People have asked, hey, do you, do you think they'd want to use my car? And, you know, I'm not really in charge of that. These guys, these studio guys, they know that I have a slew of cars and they just call me when they need something. I don't have the relationship that so many other guys have uh, with the producers and the directors of these shows or, or movies. I'm kind of their go-to guy when it comes to a particular brand of car. I do have a lot of classic muscle cars that I haven't even really shared with you guys. Alex and I have been building cars for years. As you guys know, we do a lot of JDM stuff. Um, but I also have a rather extensive collection of American classics. Depending on whether you guys would like to see that stuff, hit me up. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see some of our our Chevelle builds. I've got a Cuda that I'm going to share with you guys because we're doing a complete, you know, rotisserie build on this uh, 71 Cuda. You know, bought a 71 Barracuda. People always ask, oh, a Barracuda, Cuda. The Cuda is just the performance version of a Barracuda. 1971 is a really tricky car to buy because it's the really only quad headlight Cuda or Barracuda that they ever made. And I was able to find one and it's a Man, it's a rust bucket, but it's got great rails. It's got great bones uh, outside of the floor pans and uh, some of the quarter extensions and things like that. Uh, it's, it's actually a pretty solid car, but it's a, it's a bitch getting in there and welding all new floors into a car that has nice rails because you have to, sometimes it's better to just start over, but this one's pretty nice. We're going to share that one in a future video, and I think you guys will like what you're going to see on that because we're going to do a resto mod version on that car, but that's for another video. We'll talk about that later, but hit us, hit us up in the comments. Do you guys want us to share some of our, our domestic builds? Because we have a lot of those. Just wasn't sure that you guys would like to see some of that stuff, but you know, the same amount of detail work that we put into all of our, our movie replicas and in our studio stuff, that same same amount of work and stress goes into our other builds. And you'll see that in the quality of those builds. So there you go, guys. That is it in a nutshell. Help, I'm in a nutshell. And I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're not a subscriber, please, we're getting so close to 100,000, and I would love it, we all would, if you'd you know, just uh, support us by giving us a subscription and you know we'll, we'll do this again in fact probably the next one i'll do is the cuda so thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one that's my favorite <laughs> don't get me wrong they're all special the 69 player i've been looking for i have a line on a real 69 uh, uh chp polara and it's just you know the guys in the police car space um, have a really high threshold and value what they think their cars are worth. And, you know, I can't argue with them. And, and I'm trying to buy this rusty 1969 
previously owned CHP car and you know it's it's 10 grand just for the body and it's got a mismatched motor and it's rusty it needs everything it's hard for me to justify purchasing that knowing I'm gonna spend 20 grand just to get the body decent and then I have to track down all the correct components so uh, it was way better for me to just find a civilian version of the 69 and make it beautiful and when it has the wheels painted black and has the dog dish caps on it and it's got the black spotlights and the push bar and the correct steering wheel on it on camera if we get a call for and and that one i'm probably not gonna let them paint a different color because we put way too much time in and that was such a nice car to start with um, so if there's a call out for a 1969 film where they need a 69 chp specific car i'll let that one go for rental not for uh, not to, not to sell i know a lot of people have asked oh will you sell some of these and you know we do occasionally depending on how long they sit and, and if we're not getting the calls then you know off they go and we make room for the next one so <laughs> that's a weird screw, got a screw loose. Uh, definitely got a screw loose okay guys so whoa the ground moved under my feet i was standing here minding my own business so tell them about the drip rail moldings you know my favorite thing in the whole wide world is drip rail moldings. What about drip rail moldings? Drip rail moldings, the drip rail moldings, drip rail moldings, drip rail molding, drip rail moldings. Drip rail moldings on the A pillar, drip rail moldings, saying, hey, we're getting too much drip rail molding. Drip rail molding, this drip rail molding's on in this scene, entire drip rail molding on the upper portion is missing. Screw it, we're gonna go with full drip rail moldings. Drip rail moldings. <laughs>